What I wanted to point out over here is this is where... This week on Oahu, the State Commission on Water Resource Management meets on the possible designation for a water management area in Kona. The Water Commission will receive a briefing and presentations by Hawaii County Department of Water Supply and County Planning Department on the Keaho Aquifer System Area application. The briefing is part of the Commission's preliminary scientific investigation, part of its duty to analyze a national park petition to designate a groundwater water management area for Kona. So this is uh, less salty than the average of all the 100 and, was it 183 ponds that you guys look at? The Commission has been doing a lot of investigating in Kona over the last few months. This video was taken during a September 17th site visit to the Nelha and Kaleen Ponds. The footage is courtesy the Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources. You got chlorides, you got salinity, and you have conductivity. Keith gave you salinity. 100% seawater is 35. I gave you conductivity. Which would be? 100% seawater is 50. As you can see, there's no big algal blooms. We, we have coral out here. It's a beautiful reef. It's really a cool location. And then as we walk past, you probably saw the pump house. That's where I get really interested. That's kind of cool seeing all that happening. There's room down here. The same day, commissioners yeah. stopped by Koanike Shores. Uh, that we partially treat through a reverse osmosis uh, plant. Uh, to, to use the water for irrigation. It's not fresh water, it's just less brackish, something we can manage. What you're looking at is about a million and a half gallon a day capacity reverse osmosis plant. This uses brackish water, of course, which allows us to use a much lower pressure, also much lower energy consumption. The osmotic pressure of this water is about 70 PSI, so these systems run at about 300 PSI to purify the water. Seawater, by way of comparison, is about 300 PSI. Osmotic pressure takes 1,000 PSI. So very important that we use the brackish water, as you see. But the salt water, of course, goes on salt-tolerant grasses, which allows us to use a little bit more water than otherwise would be processed. And, of course, it kills the weeds to prevent having to use any additional herbicides. The visiting group also stopped by the site managed by the petitioners, Coloco Honokahau National Historical Park. We welcome you, the Commission of Water Resource Management, to Coloco Honokahau National Historical Park. So, who created this park? Your Hawaiian kupuna. And later on, we'll talk about what that report said. What did it recommend, especially in terms of water? Because there's no question the spirit of this place would be dead and desolate and destroyed if it wasn't for the continuous flow of waters that, then the cycle that, you know, our kupuna and our chanter just gave to us this morning. So, in a nutshell, folks, uh, the park was created by Hawaiians. Uh, this is one of our ankyline pools in the park. We have over 186 ankyline pools that are identified, mapped, and, and have some data on. There are other ankyline pools in the park that we have not yet uh, done so for. Ankyline pools are extremely rare habitat worldwide. In the United States, they're only found in the state of Hawaii. And uh, this island has the majority of pools in the state because of its uh, youthful age in, in terms of lava. Um, this pond, uh, uh, so ankyline pools in general are habitat for uh, rare endemic insects, mollusks, such as your snails, and uh, crustaceans. The session went into the afternoon with briefings by the National Park. The superintendent for Coloco Honokahau, Tammy Duchesne, spoke first. In addition to the enabling legislation I just shared, it goes on to say the Secretary of the Interior shall consult with and may enter into agreements with other governmental entities and private landowners to establish adequate controls on the air and water quality and the scenic and aesthetic values of the areas surrounding land and water areas. This means that they found it so important to call out the explicit need to manage for water resources and the need for the National Park Service, the federal government, to work with governmental entities to provide management of water, just as was called for in the Spirit Report. I believe that it would be very valuable for you to understand the process and the reasoning that the National Park Service went through when it decided to respectfully request that you use your constitutionally mandated authority 
to begin to manage the use of groundwater in this unique area of the Big Island. This is another section of the Hawaii Constitution, Section 7. I think what's significant here is it talks about an obligation, an affirmative obligation of the state to protect, to control, to regulate. What the precautionary principle is, we delved into a little more into the public trust doctrine and what the purpose of that doctrine is. And it's clear from looking at the cases that have spoken on this from the courts that it's a preventive doctrine. It's one that says, let's attempt to prevent harm to these resources. And we concluded that the only way we could obtain such protection was through the designation of a water management area. I'm going to give a scientific overview of the information in the petition. Uh, we do not have evidence that existing pumping has adversely affected these resources. And um, what we are asking is analogous to an in-stream flow for groundwater to keep these resources healthy. So it's been suggested to us that we should wait for impacts to be observed and then ask for restrictions on pumping. This would be like trying to put water back in the stream after you diverted too much. I think you've been in that situation, and it's a situation we would like to avoid. There was even a second day of site visits. On October 9th, commissioners stopped by another section of the um, National Park. The first site we're going to go to is Aimakapa Pond. Uh, we didn't get to that last time, so we wanted to finish that up. Uh, so you get a, a bigger picture of the entire park. Um, well, welcome to Aimakapa Fish Pond. It's a 30-acre wetland. About half of that is water, half of that is wetland area. And um, it's the uh, breeding habitat for the endangered Hawaiian stilt and the endangered Hawaiian coot. It is considered and has been listed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as a core wetland. Believe me, the park... Uh, I love what the park do. When we go away in the mainland, we visit the parks, you know. But I think this is just a little out of hand. Uh, uh, there's, there's, no, there's no threat to the and, and the... and the studies that we see, you know, has improved that there, that there is a threat to our aquifer here. Site visits on that day were limited, however, due to the occurrence of another event in Kona, the Ironman World Championship. But um, we came to find out that there's an uh, event there. It's going to be very crowded. Actually, Ali'i Drive is closed as well. Um, the event is uh, uh, some underpants run, so we forgot to bring enough uh, uh, underpants? suntan lotion, so we're going to skip that. <laughs> However, the group did make it over to an important county Department of Water Supply facility. This is our Kahalu shaft. It was um, started in construction in 1975 uh, when the state saw basically the need for the additional source to develop, be developed for uh, projected growth in Kona. It's, it was intended to provide up to 10 million gallons a day uh, in, for the future demand. However, I think we've gone up to a little over six million gallons a day. And we, you know, knowing the chloride issues that we do have, uh, didn't really pursue increasing the capacities. After the site visits, more presentations were made at West Hawaii Civic um, Center. The Department of Water Supply, we operate and maintain 23 water systems across the island. Uh, in those water systems, we have over 70 sources. We have close to 200 tanks, 79 booster pumps, over 250 PRVs, and over 1,000 miles of pipe. We have 41,000 customers plus, and we serve approximately 110,000 of the island's population. And we do this with 160 employees over one main office and four base yards. The mayor decided to call uh, his high-level staff, the managing director, myself, our corporation council, um, project folks from uh, the, the Department of Water Supply, the manager, deputy managing director and stuff. And we invited um, the National Park uh, to come in, Kuka, talk story with us uh, at the mayor's request, and they did. You know, we, we believe we had a, a real good session that was out here in Kona. Um, so it was at that meeting that um, he advocated uh, to the National Park, you know, what, is there something here we can, uh, 
kind of find some middle ground on and go forward with that. Regretfully, um, the National Park Service uh, uh, basically said there was nothing on the table, so they didn't believe uh, there was you know, any further discussions or nothing could be accomplished by um, continuing discussion. So from our standpoint, from the county standpoint, we, you know, we're continuing to reach out to see whether or not there's some middle ground we can accomplish here. A public meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, December 10th at the West Hawaii Civic Center in so Keala Kehe. Public testimony will be taken. Um, uh, with me, I have Kurt Inaba, our engineer.